We've talked about the audit risk model in other discussions, but what I would thought we would do is spend a few minutes talking specifically about how this audit risk model is managed from the auditor's perspective. So we notice that we have the audit risk model. So the audit risk model is audit risk equals inherent risk times control risk times detection risk. Now you notice that these items are the product. In other words, inherent risk is multiplied by control risk multiplied by detection risk. Well, I'm not so much interested in looking at these from a uh, numeric perspective only to understand that if one item is high, let's say inherent risk is at 0.7, then what we're going to do is to mitigate this by hopefully lowering the control risk or detection risk. In any event, the end result is audit risk. And we've talked about audit risk as being the risk that the auditor takes where he or she is reporting an opinion that is unqualified when in fact there are material misstatements. Now, uh, we certainly understand this and from the audit opinion letter, we're stating that we are only providing reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free of material misstatement. So in any event, we're not looking at absolute assurance, we're looking at reasonable assurance. So the auditor is always considering the fact that there is a risk that the audit opinion is inappropriate. But again, from the auditor's perspective, this needs to be managed. And the idea is that we could always do more work, but the audit needs to be done on a timely basis the audit also needs to be done within budget. So considering these factors, what we're looking for is to manage audit risk, not to eliminate audit risk. So you notice that we have inherent risk times detection risk represents the risk of material misstatement. Based upon this risk of material misstatement, the auditor will develop the nature, timing, and extent of the substantive procedures. So you notice that this is under the category of detection risk. So if the risk of material misstatement is high, then the auditor will develop testing that essentially mitigates this high risk of material misstatement. And why is the auditor doing this? Well, we've talked about the uh, legal risk that the auditor is exposed to. So we need to understand that if in fact the auditor issues an inappropriate opinion and something bad happens to the company, chances are the auditor is going to be affected by this through litigation, through adverse publicity, and it's very possible that uh, this is not only going to be expensive from a uh, legal perspective, but also expensive in terms of lost future business. So again, the idea is that the auditor is very interested in managing the audit risk. So from the audit risk model, what we are interested in doing is setting a planned level of audit risk such that an, an opinion can be issued on the financial statement. We are initially assessing the risk of material misstatement through the inherent risk and control risk. We use the audit risk equation to solve the appropriate level of detection risk. And again, not so much interested in this from an absolute mathematical perspective, but we're all interested in this from the perspective of understanding the relationship between these three variables, inherent risk, control risk, and detection risk, as it relates to the audit risk. So the auditor uses this level of detection risk to design audit procedures that will reduce audit risk to an acceptable level. So again, when we talk about detection risk or DR, what we're talking about is how the auditor designs the nature, timing, and extent of the substantive procedures. So again, when we are conducting a risk assessment, when we are looking at internal controls, we are looking at this from the perspective of understanding the risk of material misstatement. It's not until we conduct these substantive procedures where we are finally 
measuring the monetary misstatement in the financial statements and our opinion is based upon the testing that we're doing from the substantive procedures. Looking at this here, and again we're stating the same thing uh, several different from several different perspectives, is what we're looking for is the relationship of the entity's business risks to the audit risk model. So what are we doing from a practical perspective? So from a methodical perspective is we initially assess the entity's business risks. We relate those risks to what can go wrong at the business account level or at the disclosure level. Based upon our assessment of the inherent risk, of business risk, of the control risk, is we determine the risk of material misstatement. And based upon this is we will determine the appropriate level of detection risk. And it's through this level of detection risk that we determine the testing that we're doing from a substantive perspective to measure monetary misstatement. So let's talk about this from a risk assessment perspective. So you notice here, is that how do we gather evidence in terms of the risk of material misstatement? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make inquiries of management, other entity personnel, and others outside the entity. We are conducting analytical procedures. Analytical procedures are simply mathematical uh, ratio analyses that we're doing on the financial statements to determine where numbers have changed, to determine where there might be risks to this financial statement as compared to prior. And then what we're doing is observation and inspection. So you notice here that inquiries, observation and inspections, as well as analytical procedures, forms the basis for our gathering evidence in this risk assessment procedure. One of the things from an audit perspective that we do is what we're attempting to do is gain an understanding of the entity and its environment. Well, why are we interested in the entity's environment? Well, we certainly are interested in the regulatory and external factors that are affecting risks within the organization. We certainly want to understand the nature of the entity. The nature of the entity is going to determine the audit strategy and very specific audit tests that we're doing. We're looking at internal controls as well as objectives, strategies, and business risks of the organization. What we're interested in doing is understanding where the organization is going from a strategic perspective. This clearly is going to impact us from the perspective of understanding the risks. So when we talk about the nature of the entity, what we're interested in is the organizational structure and management personnel. We're interested in understanding the sources of funding for the entity's uh, operation, the capital structure, any non-capital funding and other debt instruments. We're understanding the entity's investments. We certainly want to understand the operational characteristics, including its size and complexity understand the sources of the entity's earnings, including the relative profitability of key products and services, as well as a key supplier and customer relationships. When we're looking at industry factors, we're certainly interested in industry conditions, the competitive environment, the cyclical factors related to the, to the organization, uh, product technology as it's improving or maybe uh, product technology is moving to the point where the, the technology is becoming obsolete. So we'd be interested in finding out what they're doing in regards to mitigating the effects of obsolescence. Regulatory environment is absolutely going to impact whether it's accounting principles, regulatory environment from the specific industry, say it's healthcare or manufacturing. We want to understand what regulatory environment there is legislative uh, tax, tax issues. Uh, we want to understand the total regulatory environment as it affects the organization. We also want to look at external factors, the general economy, 
interest rates, availability of financing, as well as inflation, currency revaluation, anything that's going to affect the industry and the organization. And as these organizations become multinational, the risk factors are simply going to increase. We need to understand and obtain evidence related to the internal control and operating effectiveness. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that from the financial statement perspective is we're interested in these internal controls throughout the year. We're interested in these internal controls because this internal control testing that we're doing is going to determine our control risk, which becomes a part of the risk of material misstatement. The one point that we want to make in regards to the opinion on internal control effectiveness based upon the Sarbanes-Oxley uh, required testing and reporting for internal controls over financial reporting is the internal control opinion over financial reporting is as of year end date. So theoretically, if the organization has a control weakness, if this has been resolved and we're able to test prior to year end, is the year end testing is what impacts our opinion for the Sarbanes-Oxley testing for the internal controls over financial reporting. However, for the financial statement audit, we're interested in the internal controls throughout the year. So the question becomes is how are we going to select the controls to test? Well, this involves choosing controls that effectively indicate the capability to address the risk of material misstatement. This includes uh, controls for all five uh, components of the COSO model and the types of control testing that we're doing. Primarily what we're looking at is we're looking at inquiry and observation. Inquiry and observation is critical to our understanding of controls. And what are we talking about here? We're, what we're talking about is asking and understanding what controls are in place or what controls should be in place based upon observation and then observing these controls in process to make sure that they're actually designed correctively, uh, correctly and operating correctly. We're also inspecting relevant documentation. So as an example, if the control is that it, uh, the company requires two signatures on any check over $10,000, well, we're going to inspect checks over $10,000 to determine if the uh, control is operating effectively. Reperformance of a control is going to be critical to our understanding. This is especially true in a IT environment where many of the controls are in fact embedded in the system. The impact of testing of controls for the financial statement. If a control deficiency is identified, we assess them to determine whether the preliminary control assessment should be modified, um, and then we record the implications for our substantive procedures. So again, what we're looking at here is what we're trying to determine is the nature, timing, and extent of our substantive procedures. So if we identify control weaknesses, maybe these are control weaknesses that we were not aware of, then we need to consider these as we are uh, considering our substantive procedures. If we don't identify control deficiencies, we need to assess whether the preliminary control risk is still appropriate, determine the extent of controls that can provide evidence on the accuracy of account balances and then determine and plan the substantive audit procedures. So again, it's very important that we understand the control environment as we are developing these substantive procedures. And it's the substantive procedures that we're using in terms of defining and measuring monetary misstatement and determining if in fact the financial statements are free of these material misstatements. So the impact of the test of controls is what we want to determine is how much assurance about the reliability of the account balances can be obtained from the effective operation of controls. Within any audit, the level of assurance will, will vary 
depending upon the type of accounts, the type of the disclosures, and the assertions. So this provides a very basic understanding of the audit risk model. And again, the audit risk model is the auditor is accepting a certain level of risk. However, the auditor wants to manage this risk. So by managing this risk, they're focusing, the auditor is focusing on the inherent risk, the control risk, and the detection risks. So we're going to be continuing our discussion with this topic. It's very important that we have a good understanding of the audit risk model because this essentially is going to impact everything that we're going to do throughout the rest of the course. So I thank you very much for your time. <music>